All right, welcome back. This is week 12, part three. We're going to finish up by talking about some of these various comprehension strategies that are important for making meaning of a text. First is monitoring, also known as clarifying. This is being aware whether or not you are understanding the text and then dealing with problems as they arise to fix any misunderstandings. This is a definite challenge for struggling adolescent readers since they don't understand what they read, but they also don't know that they don't understand what they read. So we definitely need to teach them how to monitor what they are reading and teach them what to do when what they're reading no longer makes sense to them. Students often believe that if they can decode, then they are understanding the text. However, that's not always the case. Monitoring what you're reading is fundamental to reading comprehension. One strategy I learned for teaching this is the about point method, which I believe comes from the Manzo and Manzo text that I used in one of the courses for this program. But after each paragraph, the student either thinks to themselves or jots in the margin, this paragraph is about blah, blah, blah. The point of this paragraph is blah, 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 as in why did the author include this paragraph? What is the point or purpose of this paragraph? I love that about point method and you have used it with second graders, fifth graders, sixth graders, students of all ages to really get them to attend to what they are reading and to monitor what they are reading. This nice chart actually comes from a recent reading teacher article titled Reading What Else Matters Besides Strategies and Skills, and it provides some teacher questioning that you can use to help students monitor what they are reading. Questions like, why are you reading? Does this make sense? Is there a problem? Not like problem and solution, but a problem for... Uh, you know, the, your reading process. What is the problem? Can you fix it? Can you get back on track? So I thought this was interesting as a tool to use to help teach and coach students to monitor what they are reading. I also like this graphic because it helps break down when reading is impeded, what's going on. It's either a word is not recognized or there is a meaning issue. If a word is not recognized, that would imply some word recognition strategies like decoding, phonics, or chunking would need to be employed. Whereas if it's a meaning issue, you might need to have a word learning strategy if they're uh, meaning is not happening at the word level, so these are different strategies to use to learn new words, or maybe it's a comprehension strategy needs to be used, or possibly a fix-up strategy may need to be used. So in the case where a student is monitoring and they realize what they're reading doesn't make sense, Maybe or maybe they're thinking about something that is not the text. They might need to reread, look back, use context clues, ask someone, or check a reference. These would be various fix-up strategies. So I think this provides a nice summary of what type of strategy to employ for the various issues that arise when we are reading. The next strategy is connecting to world knowledge or activating prior knowledge, also called background knowledge. This is where you link knowledge from previous experiences to ideas in the text. When readers know the topic of the text beforehand, it does have a huge impact on their success with the text, and you may have seen that with your QRI passages. This idea is related to schema theory and readers need to learn to tap into relevant world knowledge. I know in doing read-alouds to first and second graders, a lot of times they make connections to the name of the character or the character is a dog and I have a dog. That might not be relevant world knowledge always. Next strategy is predicting. This is where you make an informed guess about what will come next using prior knowledge and clues from the text. 
essentially it's making a hypothesis while you're reading that you're testing out. When readers make predictions, they set expectations for the reading, which also drives their purpose and drives motivation to continue reading. Predicting before can focus student attention. Predicting during the reading can guide the student reading, and then evaluating predictions at the end can help students in recalling information. So predicting is an important comprehension skill. Recognizing text structure is also important. It requires that you be able to identify the way a text is organized. Oftentimes this can help you recall information and identify key information from the text or even understand the main idea of the text. There is narrative text structure, is the story structure, there is a description, cause and effect, main idea details, compare and contrast, problem solution, chronological order, might be different text structures seen in informational texts and can give you a glimpse into the purpose behind the text or the author's purpose. Are they comparing and contrasting you know, domestic cats with wild cats, or are they doing chronological order of how a cat develops? Or um, I know a lot of times when you ask a student what's the main idea of this, they say cats. Well, what about cats? And the text structure can help us identify a lot of times a more specific main idea and the purpose behind the text. All right, let's talk about asking questions. Generating questions engages readers in the text. They are more engaged when they come up with their own questions even, so that would be a good practice to try out. They can serve as a form of self-assessment. Teaching students to ask questions and look for answers also helps to build and monitor motivation. Answering questions is the ability to find answers to questions and knowing how to locate the needed information. So I already talked about question answer relationships, QAR, where answers can be found in the text or they can be found in the reader's head. So if they're in the text, they're either right there or you may have to do a think and search. If they're in, in your head, they might be completely on on, a, on, on the reader's own, more of a cr creative or critical comprehension level, or it could be author and me where you're having to take the author's information and make an inference. So those are the different question answer relationships provided there. All right, constructing mental images, aka visualizing. Imagery promotes active processing of text. It also provides a structure for organizing and recalling text. It can be supported by visuals in the text or completely unaided, which is what makes chapter books more challenging is a lot of times it is unaided that the readers need to create those visuals. Summarizing is being able to make a brief statement containing essential information of the passage. It really requires the reader to distill information and highlight what is most important. I feel like the about point method would probably help with this as well. It requires a deep analysis of text. A lot of times those struggling with comprehension also struggle to summarize. Here is another chart diagram from the reading teacher from a different article called Comprehension at the Core. And I liked it because it provides a comprehension continuum. So you can think about this as you are assessing your reader. Uh-oh, sorry. Don't know what happened there. All right, so here we have the ability to answer literal questions would be at the low end of the continuum, followed by retelling merging thinking with content, acquiring knowledge from the reading, and then actively using that knowledge. So this provides a continuum for looking at comprehension, and it even provides uh, more of a description of what each of these levels looks like, and then teacher language and even questioning that supports each of these levels. So when you give your comprehension assessments, you can think about giving an assessment that would show these different levels 
or looking specifically at where the breakdown is. So I thought this might help you in planning those assessments this week. All right, teaching comprehension strategies. There definitely should be some scaffolding where teacher support is gradually faded. So the teacher would explain the strategy, model the strategy, guide the students to use the strategy. They would apply it and practice it independently, and then the teacher can assess their proficiency in using the strategy. Graphic organizers can also help teach comprehension strategies. Nonverbal and verbal prompts can help with strategy instruction, cooperative learning, read alouds, contextualizing instruction, mental modeling, front loading, and then doing reader responses through discussion or in writing or different ways you can teach comprehension strategies. Assessing comprehension should be ongoing. You can also use informal assessment, do retelling, student think alouds, close exercises, maze, which you're doing this week, question answering, and writing. All right, lots of information on comprehension. Hopefully you have some more ideas for how you can measure and assess comprehension. You will need to be able to report and analyze results from comprehension assessments. We looked at some different tools you could use and maybe even some tables to incorporate. Even discuss next steps for comprehension instruction. All right, to launch you, I have this quote which comes from Fisher, Douglas, and Frey and their article in Principal Leadership called Text Dependent Questions. And they say, the types of questions that students are asked about a text influence how they read it. If students are asked recall and recitation questions, they learn to read for that type of information. If they are asked synthesis questions, they learn to read for that type of information. Unfortunately, many of the questions that students are asked are about personal connections, which may not even require them to have read the text at all. So thinking about the implications of the assessments we give and the questions we ask, if you were just asking retail questions, they're going to learn to read for that purpose. If you're asking personal connection questions, they don't even need to read at all, which may explain why a lot of students are in this habit of using excessive elaborations. So they provided some different ways to beef up the expectations so that you can actually ask text dependent questions. So here are the different strategies that you may want to think about using this week because Common Core expects students to read the text carefully and even produce text evidence. So try utilizing these seven types of text dependent questions, general understanding questions or the gist, key detail questions, who, what, where, when, vocabulary questions that go with that craft and structure, definitions using context clues, text structure questions where they have to think about how the text is organized, author's purpose questions, other types of inferencing questions like relational and causal, and then opinions, arguments, and intertextual connections. So lots to think about this week, but definitely be thinking about the best way to measure your student's comprehension at many different levels and to be asking them questions that are dependent on the text and that matter and that ultimately get them to see a greater purpose in reading the text. All right, have a great week with your student. Having your third session, you only have two more after this one, and we are gearing down and wrapping up this course. So keep up the great work.